Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm going to try and get this vanity all finished up in this video, but man, there is a lot of work to do. Uh, all of these panels need to be grooved to fit a quarter inch panel, and I'm all set up at the router table, so we'll get over there in, in just a minute. Uh, the other panel that I glued up at the end of the last video, I pulled out of clamps this morning, uh, and I got those dominoes cleaned up. I actually used a router plane to do that and it worked extremely well. So I'm sure that I will have that issue here as well. Um, and then we can dry fit and we got to find those plywood notches for the legs and start breaking down some plywood. So I'm going to move up to grooving these next. I set up the router table because I thought I was going to have stopped dados and I am not. Everything can go through. Uh, even these ones, you know, where you would see it on the ends, they tie into a leg. So you're never going to see it. So I can run everything as through dados and, uh, you know, dry fit it back up, measure for panels and, and cut panels. So, uh, yeah, let's move over to the router table. Okay, so off camera I went ahead and cut the quarter inch plywood that uh, fits all the grooves. So uh, this is just a dry fit and you know kind of helps me get my clamping strategy for what I want to do. Um, so next up, I'm going to move this over there and glue up these panels and let them sit for the better part of the afternoon and then we'll be ready for a dry fit finally. Okay, there's the dry fit with the panels in it. So now I can get measured up for the three quarter inch plywood and mark the notch outs for the legs to fit those shelves. That's kind of the most important thing I got left here. Um, so yeah, that's what's next. Uh, get that stuff marked and pull it back apart. Okay, so this is all really a difficult thing to video because it's so big and a lot of what I'm marking now is hidden. So uh, I think you can see through here I've marked on the legs where that bottom shelf is going to notch in. Um, I've also set these two center panels uh, just so that they get a three quarter dado on the bottom for the center shelf in here and that's the easy part. Uh, but the side shelves actually come up a ways to meet this one over here. But I've been able to get those marks on here as well where those go um, so we can get those, those put in as well. So next up, I'm going to pull all of this part and put the dado stack back in and, and start cutting these dados. That probably won't be till tomorrow morning. Um, I'm going to let this sit here for tonight and just think on a little bit and make sure I'm going the right path. Okay, well I decided to go ahead and cut my dados in the center panels there because it's, they have to be in place irregardless of what I do with the legs. So even though I'm still thinking about that a little bit, I can go ahead and cut these. Um, I put my dado stack in, my sacrificial fence, I'm set it, you know, roughly three quarters, ran my test piece and, and that's all good. So I'll go ahead and cut the bottoms and then I'll have to adjust the fence to get that center on the other side. And I've marked them based off of the actual fit up. So we'll just go ahead and get these cut. Okay, I've readjusted the fence. And I've, I've added this push down block on here so that the panel doesn't float on me. I got my mark per, per the cabinet itself and I, you, it's hard to see, but I've marked an X on where my dado actually belongs. So hopefully that dummy proofs it a little bit for me. And we'll go ahead and get this cut.
Okay, I know I said next up I was gonna pull this apart and notch the legs, um, but the client contacted me and wants to come look, so rather than have it all pulled apart when you get here, uh, I decided I would move on to the slap material, and I knew that there was some epoxy work that was gonna have to be done. So I just rough milled up the slats, there'll be eight of them uh, in the bottom, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get these taped up and get them in epoxy. So at least I'm not spinning my wheels here. All right, so I've created just a simple jig here that clamps on so I can cut that groove in the legs. Groove will be about a quarter of an inch. Uh, so I've set up my gap in here for that and the back hits where I want it to stop. Clamps on nicely, gives me plenty of support. Um, all I had was, I didn't have a three-quarter guide bushing so I had to use a half inch bit so I made this just a little bit wider and I'll do it in a couple passes so see how we did and my test piece of plywood and that's a good fit. I'll still have to square up the corners, uh, but I'll do that with a chisel. Okay, and I cut a small piece of scrap just to test fit uh, all my marks and layout, and I, I'm pretty happy with that. So to make the notches in the shells themselves, I've set up a stop block. When I made my little test piece over there, I used that to set my stop block. Uh, just clamp this to my sled, and I'm going to push it through, and then I'll rotate it and push it through again. Okay, so there it is in a dry fit. I'm actually ready to go to the glue up. Um, this glue up is gonna be a very long process because there are so many pieces, it's gonna have to be done in stages. So I will flip the camera back on as we get to each stage and, and show you what I glued up first so you can see the order. Um, but there is a lot of parts in this. It's gonna take me, gonna take me a little while to get this case all glued up. Okay, so the first glue up is the back legs onto the back panel. Okay, the front frame and legs put on just like the rear. The only thing different I did in this one was I added the dominoes for the side pieces, just because I was there. All right, so that's the bulk of the glue up. Uh, still have uh, one more glue up to go when we'll do the face frame, or the, actually it's the back panel. We'll do the back panel frame and the uh, lower shelf holders, and that'll be in one more separate glue up. But right now it's all square, it looks good. Um, I'm happy with it. Okay, so there's the final glue up of the carcass. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's all square, it looks good. Uh, the center panel is actually only set in place for right now, so if you see gaps in there, that's why. Uh, the client has requested this panel be removable, so if they have to fight with the plumbing, it's easy for them to do. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for the night, uh, and then tomorrow I'll go ahead and, and get this sanded up and, and pretty much ready to go and probably do a coat of pre-finish, and then I'll start on the doors. Uh, so that's what's up next, and I will see you all in the morning. Okay, so this morning I came out and decided to go ahead and add just these faux strips to the inside. So the inside will look very much like the outside. Uh, you see I've got them clamped on here. Just glue uh, a couple of spots that I couldn't get clamps. I used just a couple of pin nails. Um, so I'm going to let that cure up and then we'll get after the doors. Okay, and there's the uh, stock that I've milled up for the doors. Uh, again, just dominoes. Um, but I am going to try to center the domino because on the upper and lower on each one I need to do a stopped groove for the quarter inch panel that goes in. So I'm going to try to land those in the domino. Uh, just make my, my life a little bit easier at the router table.
Okay, I've set up for my Euro hinges. I got my headache jig all set up, ready to go. All I'm gonna do is just drill for these uh, hinges. Okay, so apologies, this is just a horrible angle to try to film. Um, I've clamped a straight edge up here, and I've marked the locations, and I'm just going to pilot drill, and then get these mounted, flushed up tight, and then I'll adjust the hinges using their built-in adjustments to equal that strip. Okay, so there it is, basically all finished up. Uh, still got some finish sanding, knock some of these little edges and stuff off, um, and obviously get finish on it. Um, but I'm super happy with how it turned out. Soft closes work great. Um, so I know this one's getting a little long in the tooth, so I don't want to, I don't want to drag this out too much, but I do want to finish it in this video. Um, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and hit this first with a coat of armor seal, uh, to pop all this nice walnut grain. And then, uh, after that, I'm going to go ahead and spray a waterborne finish on it. So. I'll take a break and, and show you after just the uh, armor seal and, uh, and then we'll move on to the waterborne. So I'm actually spraying uh, general finishes waterborne over the top of this. I'm set up with my Fuji sprayer um, and all I'm really going after tonight is the insides of things and, and the backs of the doors uh, and I have another little project here, uh, it's a Christmas gift going out that needs a shot. So I'm gonna shoot all of that stuff. I might give a light coat to the outside, um, but that's all I'm gonna shoot for tonight. And then tomorrow I'll probably add two to three more coats. And to those question me not covering this table, I was noticing glue and whatnot was starting to stick to this table. So I covered the stuff that was important underneath, and I'll go ahead and add a few coats of waterborne to this while I'm while I'm shooting projects. Okay guys, so there it is. Uh, I ended up doing two coats of armor seal on this and about four coats of the waterborne uh, high performance. I'm happy with, with how it all turned out. Uh, I'm hoping the client will be happy with it as well. All the doors and stuff, they work, uh, they work great. So soft close, they are slow, but you can also force them if you want. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. I apologize for the length, and uh, until the next one, take care.